did in the disk library, I guess, like been using Topic for maybe six years, and my views are my own views and not my employers. I'll work about that or anyone else involved. Um, Puppet is really great, and it's also not really great. I'm going to kind of talk about some things, why I think that. Um, it's getting better every day. Just like all open source software is always getting better. I think software in general is generally getting better. Sometimes it's not getting, getting better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's some really new great stuff. There's a new parts to it, Puppet 3.2, which is going to have a lot of improvements. Um, I guess like, all right, so I want to talk about Webman. Anyone here ever use Webman? All right, and it sucks, right? <laughs> and another great one is, uh, next slide is cPanel. Um, like, yeah, then, like cPanel. But the problem with like software like Webman and cPanel is that it provides you with this really nice uh, interface, right? But the interface is off, like, it's limiting what you can actually do. Well, I mean, in cPanel's case, it doesn't actually work. But interfaces can be can be very limiting. Puppet is a DSL, it's not really a programming language. Although a lot of people really try to treat it like it's a programming language. But it's not as bad as Webman or CPanel. It's an interface that you can, can work with. So I guess if you make it try to be like a programming language, it's not, it's gonna fight you. It's not a programming language. Think about it as like an interface. And so what what does that have to do with Puppet sucking? Right, beyond like all of the, the, the design stuff. Um, this is, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's a Minsky's Law. Um, I read it when it comes to expanding up through email. Um, those programs which cannot uh, are replaced by ones that can. Like, the joke here is like um, software will always just kind of keep growing needlessly. And so this is my thought. Um, every public code base will eventually rely on too many exact resources. Which, you know, Puppet, like, that might be kind of funny, but maybe. <laughs> so, like, the joke is um, that writing custom detection providers isn't really easy enough. Um, it requires, like, well, custom detection providers are in reviews. Like, if I want to implement a resource that's not, like, out of the box, like a package or something like that, I need to, call, I need to write what's called a uh, custom detection provider. Um, there's a book that recently came out that two really smart guys wrote. It's only about 100 pages. But it's really the first bit of documentation on how to do this. And this is like extending Puppet to do things. Um, so yeah, I guess that's that's number one. So next complaint is the DSL syntax is really the world and it sucks. And this is an example. If you've never seen Puppet syntax before, it, it sort of looks like this. So anytime you want to do anything, you have to like have those curly braces and quotes and stuff like that. And you can use resource defaults, right? And that kind of gets you a little bit. You still have to do like quotes and comments. And so it's one of those things, right? How do you express these things in, in a DSL? And remember, the DSL isn't really a programming language, it's kind of an interface. How do you express these things in a DSL and have it really powerful? Um, and a lot of this means, like, since it is kind of a, more of an interface, sharing modules is still really hard to do, and, and code reuse between different projects and between, between different people is still really hard. Because the DSL is more of a, an interface to, to, to configure these resources and new projects. Um, so a lot of them. If you look at a lot of the modules and you look at the style guide, the official profile style guide, you'll see that like they don't match the style guide at all. And there's no like module versioning standard at all, which is just kind of really silly. I would just, I would hope and I would love if I could actually specify this module work with this range of topic versions, but you can't do that right now. It's just got all like loose and, and everything everywhere, which means writing for a module is really hard. I've tried to write modules that will work on a range of systems, but there's so many differences between the different versions of Puppet. How do you actually handle all the different versions of Puppet and have a new module? Beyond all the module versioning stuff, orchestration and control states is really hard, like having state changes. And like orchestration means I do something here and I want it to happen over here on this node only until this thing happens. What that means is like I have multiple valid states. How do I transition between these multiple valid states? But only sometimes. Really, the point to do on things is like, this is how it is right now, and this is how it should be. And like, maybe you can use some conditionals, and maybe you can have some things together. Um, you can use some Ruby, maybe, but like, personally, I hate writing Ruby, and it's an awful, terrible program language, so I don't know if it's like Ruby, but really, it's like, what's my sense? A lot of people, a lot of people get a lot of good things done. I like Python a lot. Um, and there's a lot of Ruby you have to write to really get up to things of what you want to do. And you shouldn't have to, right? It's a really long slash. 
<laughs> That's it? That's what I'm not saying? Yeah. Oh.